Hi, this is Mike Schwab. Let's take a look at the IO1X communicator. First, we need to log in to our communications environment. And then let's start with a quick tour, starting from the upper left-hand side. The first icon we have is the messages icon, which is the way that we access voicemail. It does lay this out in a visual format and shows you the different types of voicemail you may have been left. In order to play a voicemail, you simply click on it and then you get standard VCR type controls, play, pause, stop, uh, and you are able to listen to the voicemail through whatever headset, etc. that you're using. Now, please note that some messages may be marked urgent and or private. So the urgent is rather obvious. However, if you take a look on this one, it was also marked as private. So there's no file for us to listen to. Um, in this case, you would need to not use any speakers that might be in your cubicle, but rather use your telephony instrument for privacy to be able to hear that message. Also from within this screen, you have the ability to call the callers back simply by clicking on the icon and it automatically dials that number for you. From there, let's take a look at the call log. The call log is a listing of all calls that were received, placed, or may have been received but not answered. Uh, it lists them based on the information provided for that call. And from within this call log, you have the ability to actually place the calls uh, and to return calls back. We also have within this soft phone construct the ability to uh, have contacts by name and not just phone number. In this case, um, I'm typing in the last name of a coworker, and I have this set up so that it's accessing uh, the Avaya environment for contacts. I have the ability to act, um, access Active Directory as well as another source, and I even can reach into my Microsoft Outlook environment and pull contacts from there. Now, if you notice, some of these contacts have different icons on the right hand side. In this particular case, this contact has a telephony icon. It also has a small instant messaging icon, and it also has a video icon. This means that the source for that um, shows that that person actually is inside the Avaya uh, presence environment, and I'm able to instant message video them or have a regular telephony call. The next thing I'd like to do is take a look at how you can access some of the settings from within this soft phone environment. Under general settings, you have the ability to look at how you would configure your telephony login, um, messaging, conferencing capabilities, uh, all of those things that I've already touched on here you have the ability to configure this. Plus it also can be pre-configured with an XML file so that it does not have to be touched on every single desktop. The next thing I'd like to show you are some of the abilities to choose which audio source you're going to use, whether it's microphone or speaker headset. Uh, if you have an option with multiple cameras, you can select which camera it is that you're going to be using uh, for point-to-point -point videos in this environment. And also you have the ability to specify the mode. Uh, some of the things we haven't touched on are the fact that we have three different modes that this soft client can operate in using your computer with a headset. You can route the voice to a completely separate telephone uh, or you could be using a via phone on your desk in shared control mode. In here, if you remember in that contact list, I did have an, a VIP list. You can actually set this so that it will only allow VIP calls to come through in addition to blocking all calls or not blocking any, which would be more of a normal usage. Now, I just wanted to touch base here quickly on call controls. 
and how do we place a call? The most basic is to just simply type a number in following uh, what typically would be done in your environment for a dial plan. I could have either hit the enter key or I could have hit that place call icon. Once a call is established, you have a call timer that pops up and runs and you get uh, controls that are valid for that point in time for that situation. In this case, since I'm on a call, I can mute the call, I can put the call on hold, and a hold timer kicks off. At this point, if I wanted to, I could dial a separate number. Uh, and have two different calls being bounced back and forth between hold. I can unhold this call if I wanted to. I could transfer this call. And when I click on that, it opens up a transfer. I would just type the number that I wanted to transfer this call to, or I could type the name, or I could hang up the call as the call control. And then conferencing. Uh, VIA does support ad hoc conferencing for up to six simultaneous callers, including yourself, uh, and the way that you actually operate this is to press the conference button and either type the name or type the number that it is you're trying to add into this. It does not require anything special on the back end as far as a conference bridge. This is something that's something that's purely inherent to Communication Manager. So now I'm in a call and it conferenced automatically together. Now you notice I have uh, my normal call controls for conference, which are mute and hold, but I can no longer transfer. Also, I have the ability when I, if I want, to continue to just press the conference button and continue to add additional users up to a maximum of six. The drop button will drop the last person that I called into the, the, the conference. And now that I'm back to a single call, you see that the transfer buttons pop back up as part of a normal call control environment. Now, I've also said that you can just type a name. So that's specifically what I'm doing is typing a name. And in this environment, uh, Bernard Sinclair, if I want to call him, the source that I have, if it has multiple numbers listed in it, I can choose which number that I want to call. In this case, I'll go ahead and call Butch at work. So, call rings automatically to Butch's phone number that I've selected. Now, the other things I want to touch on are some of these other buttons here. Here's how you can automatically dial into a conference bridge. You can put any bridge number in there. And if it's yours as a moderator code, you can place those numbers in there as well. If it's a participant code that's consistent with bridges that you use a lot, that's one way to place that in there. The other option we have is to um, have access to, if you're used to operating in a via hard phone in this environment, we can essentially present a picture similar to that hard phone. Redial is exactly what you would expect it to be. It's just that last number that you called. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk about is our collaboration environment. In a Microsoft environment here, as you can see, I can actually, inside the email, click on a person's name and actually be able to call them based on the information coming from Active Directory. Also, with Inside Outlook, if my contacts environment, uh, if I have somebody, I can highlight them and give them a call based on the numbers as they're specified. Now here, if you notice, a pop-up, a toast pop-up just came up from Butch Sinclair. He was calling me, and that would be the way that you would receive a call uh, from an outbound or an outside person calling in. So I'm chatting with Butch for just a couple seconds here. Uh, and then from there, going to hang up the call. So this concludes 
the basics of using Avaya 1x communicator. The intent here was to provide you with just a cursory view of how 1x communicator works.